I love this world, I've tried to eat it all. I ate on China, I ate Lebanon, I ate every country, but I wanted, before I went to the food part, to tell you about the soul part, because music would be this food of life to play on. What happened was, it was in the Bradford Museum of Technology and Film, I heard for the first time a wax cylinder, and it was playing uh, uh, Alfred Lord Tennyson reciting break, 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 in a sort of fragile, high, cracked voice that made me aware that the mode of transmission is almost as important as the content. And then when my grandfather had a, a black shellac uh, 78 RPM player that would plop, plop, plop the, the discs on a green bias cloth, I then learned that the cracks have to be put into digital technology for the purposes of nostalgia. Then when I was living on a veranda in this bushwalker's house, uh, I had a pup organ uh, to scare the pigeons at midnight so I'd eat their eggs and a mattress and a portable record player which could play 16 RPM, 33 and a third, 45, and if you change the needle to steel, 78. Now that, that led me into the fact that uh, I'm pre-digital. And that means that uh, downloading and uploading is largely loading and uploading a truck for me. It's not, it has to be in the physical world. Uh, the world has moved on to the smartphones and I have stayed in the world of uh, remembrance of uh, technologies long, long gone. I still have shelves and shelves of cassette tapes and I still have uh, all the, most of the records except when someone dies. When Hendrix died, I gave away all these records because there wasn't any point. If you're dead, why listen to you? So that was just then. But you were talking about food. Yes. I, I love food with all my heart. And, and it started when I was young. I became a food addict at my mother's breast. You know, I just thought, hmm, this is good. I want more. Everywhere I went, I found dealers, food dealers, right? So uh, at various times, various adventures happened. Like uh, I was with this band and after midnight in Portsmouth. There was nothing open except this evil fish and chip shop. And all of the ethical vegetarians and vegans, all the musicians, right? But I just say, bless everything. So I ate the sloppiest, crappiest, full of grease, fish and chips you could possibly, and they looked in horror while I enjoyed every singular moment. And this didn't happen just once. This happened with a different band. It, it, we did a show in uh, San Francisco, and uh, afterwards went to Ben and Jerry's uh, on Haight Street. And they ordered the 32 bowl, the 32 bowls of ice cream, all different ice creams. Yeah, and they couldn't handle it. I said, this way. <laughs> and they looked at it with chemical horror at the fact that a feral omnivore can deal by ingesting the world and letting it pass through <coughs> and not holding on to anything. <laughs> and this happened again in San Francisco. There's a place that my hope is still exists. All you can eat buffet. I see all you can eat buffets is a personal challenge. Anyway, I went in there and ate everything they had. So I, I knew I had won when I saw the terrified look of the Japanese manager of the all you can eat buffet. So uh, that cleared him out. But many a time and oft, uh, what, what, uh, what you said to me has really brought back really memories. Like I was brought up on uh, fairly plain working class food, right? Uh, for, for a treat, we'd have a pie. And a pie would be a mystery food. Like it would be something like, is it donkey, is it kangaroo? Um, uh, you're not quite sure it was cattle. <laughs> but it, it would be a mystery, you would not know. And, and uh, that was a great education because now they have quiche pies and things I couldn't go near because they're just a little bit too refined, like sugar. And, um, oh yeah, sugar is a liar, a thief of energy, eat too much sugar, get diabetes. Salt is a liar, a thief of energy, get too much salt, get heart disease. So we were fed sugar and salt, ways to keep us, and tomato sauce, and pies, and uh, all those adventures came back. And one time in, in Bangkok, I was with these, um, these people, and I, I, I love seafood, as you love seafood, but they ate the whole thing, and I, and I was shocked. I'm in a feral omnivore, but there are certain things like, you know, shit and heads you don't eat. You know, at the top and the bottom, you just look, eat the middle. You know? <laughs> and I had to learn then, accept everything. Accept everything. So I ate the whole prawn. 
Uh, you call them shrimp, but they're little things. That's why you call them shrimp, right? That's a prawn, right? Tiger prawns and that. But I digress because some of the greatest experiences of life have been via food. And uh, what they said, what the black people said about um, soul music was that white people have taken on soul music now that black people left it 50 years ago. In other words, all we talk about is nostalgia for times that are familiar to us, whether it be in food or music. We live in a world that's retro and replay. We live in a world that replays as if as a familiarity, as if we have all been brought up in the same conditions and conditioning. Even though there is diversity in different countries and cultures, the food, as you say, there'll always be a red sauce somewhere. There'll always be, like in Cornwall, you have the Cornwall pasties, and here you have the tacos, and, and uh, Mexico has different forms of the same thing. Piece of pastry, slap mystery ingredients, and take it wherever you go. <laughs> so, the food, oh, I used to be a meat eater, eat everything that moved, until one day I saw the way the blood came dripping through. Now, I ate only vegetables, eat nothing that has parents, until today I realized vegetables have rights. That broccoli, I don't like the knife, how dare you grate that carrot, and aubergines, and courgettes too, and cut up little marrows. I'm sure tomatoes feel the pain when sliced inside your kitchen. It's hard to think a lettuce has a brain, but how do you think it grew then? Did vegetables come from the cabbage patch like dolls bought by the store, or are they points of consciousness that can't be sold or bought? I know it makes a mark of man's life to sell them for a profit, but think of fruit and vegetables and what they want and ain't got. They'd like to drive a Ferrari or maybe hot it up Porsche, not sit there hot and sweaty in some old Russian Porsche, eh? So think of fruit and vegetables next time you cut and chew them. Inside each stew, they sing to you for veggie liberation. Freedom for the fruit, everyone. Victory for the vegetables.